So we pattern match um, the function handle comment to, to match all the comments that we support. By default, we only support the ping comment. Uh, and we reply pong and the partition of this, uh, of this vnode and the state uh, if we updated it. In this case, we didn't. And a default catch all and handle comment to, to diagnose if someone is doing something weird. Uh, so now, uh, Erlang is about scalability and things, so let's do a cluster for ping handling. Uh, so we, instead of make rel, we do make dev rel. Uh, when you run on a real cluster, when you have four computers and you want to deploy a real core cluster, you will do use this make rel result and de deploy it or copy it to the four nodes and run it. But since we, or at least I have only one computer, we want to run uh, all the nodes in one computer. To do that, we have to make uh, little changes to each node so they don't collide between each other because they have to have a different name, a different they have to use different ports. Uh, when you deploy on different machines, all can use the same port because they are different machines. But in this case, this DevRel uh, helper it does all the hard work of uh, offsetting the ports and, and creating different configurations for each one with these changes. So it will create by default four releases with these uh, different changes. And we can uh, now start. We say it creates uh, under the dev folder. By default, dev1, dev2, dev3, dev4, which are four uh, releases. Uh, so we iterate over them and start them. And uh, now we can, with the same command, do ping. And we will get uh, pong, if it works. But we say, okay, yeah, we have a cluster. Let's say the let's see the member stat status. This is the other command uh, that the React Core template provides uh, is dash admin. Um, so we ask, uh, show me the information about the members of the cluster, and it says uh, just one. Uh, the, the after the name, you have the number, which uh, will will be one, two, three, and four. And say there's only one. And say that's weird. I just started four nodes. And you ask the dev4, so you ask the fourth uh, node, uh, tell me your cluster state. And they say, I, I'm a one node cluster, only myself. The, this is because you just started the nodes. You didn't tell them about the other ones. They, they have to discover themselves. So to actually cluster the nodes, you have to send the, with the Flavia admin command, the cluster join uh, subcommands and tell them one node of the cluster. So we tell the nodes two, three, and four about the, the first node, and they will stage a join request. That means they, they won't join at the beginning. They will uh, say, okay, there's a task to be run, and it's about joining a cluster. So we have to do a two-step thing. We can see if we see the status of the cluster again. <coughs> the, the, it's a four node cluster now, so we actually have a cluster. And, but three are joining, and if you wait and wait and wait and keep doing member status, they will be keep still being joining. So what you have to do is ask the cluster, uh, ask the yeah, ask one of the nodes of the cluster, what's the cluster plan? What, what changes are staged to be uh, actually run in the future? And it's not that uh, I just want to have an extra slide. You cannot commit. Uh, you cannot commit a change without looking at what the, that change will be. If you run directly cluster commit, it will say, no, just look first at what's going to be committed. So you have to run this cluster plan before cluster commit, and it's a healthy <laughs> thing to do. So it says uh, the change, the stage of changes is three nodes will be joining, and, and after the cluster transitioning, uh, you will have this uh, cluster state, and it will result in transferring uh, V nodes from the uh, one node to the others. So we will uh, transfer 16 uh, V nodes to number four, three, and two. Uh, this is because when you join a new node, it will, from this uh, 64 virtual nodes, uh, it will take some of them and give to the new uh, node. And uh, it will also mean that it will require, if you have some data on that node, you will have to transfer it. We will see later how we, that is done. So we commit the change, and uh, well, if I run the command faster, these numbers will converge to 25%, but they start at 0, 100, and they 
when the nodes are being transferred, uh, it uh, converges to 25%. And let's try a cluster. So now we say, since we already have the nodes running, we don't say console, we say attach, and it will attach to the running node and give us a, a console. Uh, in this case, we are uh, attaching to the node number one, but we can attach to any node. Uh, so we do ping and we get a, a number, and we now we uh, attach to the node three and run ping and we get pong back, so it's working, or at least it looks like. So now we have a cluster replying pings, which is uh, interesting when you start, but it's not, uh, you cannot go out and look for funding or something with that. So let's add a comment. Uh, Let's start simple. So we will add a comment that will do some calculation. Basically, add two numbers. Uh, it still won't be uh, uh, something really interesting, but uh, at the end we will have something useful actually. Uh, so we add a new function uh, on the Flavio that error uh, module, which receives two arguments. This is the API. The, we just wrap the internals. So this is you have to do it as easily to use as possible. And we do the same, basically, but now the, what the key that we hash is uh, on the first item, add or comment, that tends to be done like that. The first item is the comment you want to run. And as a second item, we convert the tuple of the two numbers that we are adding uh, as a two item tuple and we convert it to binary. That means that why, why we are doing that? Because now, if uh, you add the same numbers twice, you will get the same tuple here, which will get the same document ID, which will result in the same index. So every time we add the same numbers, we will go to the same virtual node. That's like distributing the load. You have to decide how you want to distribute the load. In this case, we are distributing accordingly to the numbers you are adding. Uh, so we do the same. We say, okay, give me a preference list of nodes to ask for this uh, for this task, to, for this comment to be executed, and we here, what it changes is the command we are passing. Here, before we passed ping here, now we pass add A and B because we need to pass all the information it needs to execute it. So uh, now on uh, Flavio V node, uh, we add an extra pattern match where we match the command we pass. Uh, and we reply, reply A plus B and the partition just to see the number, uh, the, just for instructional purposes. But now we have to build uh, the, the the release again because we have code changes. Of course, with Erlang you can do hot code loading and stuff like that, but uh, I didn't reach that part. So and I don't know. Uh, it's easier to just remove you remove the release and make the release again and connect again. Uh, so now we play with the console. We add two and five, and we get the result. Hopefully, it's really okay. And if we add the number again. We get the same virtual node, but if we add a different number, we get a different V node, and it's consistent. That's called consistent hashing. So for the same hashed key, you will get the same V node. Uh, so now we are adding numbers in a distributed fashion. Uh, we may want to keep some state on the V node because right now the V node the state doesn't change with the things you, the comments you send. So for, to start simply, we will keep a count of how many operations that Vnode handled. Uh, you can imagine, uh, like extrapolate this to keep uh, metrics, well, you could use uh, exometer or, or something else, but you could keep some counts here of internal operations or something like that. So we add a new field to the state record, and uh, now we match uh, the ops count uh, on the state when we get the add comment calculate the new count, set the new count to the state, and when we reply with the addition, we, in the third place, we return the new state. Uh, you get a state on the call, and you return the state that you want to use on the next call to the vnode, so that's how you keep state. This is really similar to gen server and stuff like that, if you already know OTP. Um, now that we have this ops count, uh, we may want to ask all the vnodes uh, how many operations have you uh, handled uh, already. So on Flavio.earl we add a new function called stats that will do something different. Uh, we will call coverage fsm start stats and a timeout. 
uh, you can get the idea here, it's a finite state machine. <coughs> uh, I don't remember if it's provided by the template or I just copy and paste it from project to project because uh, it's a, just a FSM, it has a generic uh, behavior. It just uh, <coughs> asks all the V nodes for a, a command, gets the re results, and if it gets all the results from all the V nodes before timeout, it returns that, and if not, it times out. Uh, I will cover this code here because it's a fine and safe machine and it just does just that. And I started by copying it and pasting it and you can keep doing that for a while until you have time to read the code. Uh, but what we have to do is we have to add the FSM uh, declaration on the uh, supervision hierarchy. Here, if uh, I'm not uh, really good at uh, Erlang OTP, the OTP part, so if you see that something is wrong here, please tell me after. Uh, because if you don't add uh, this uh, to the supervisor hierarchy, you will get uh, an error, something about uh, no process or something like that. Uh, it's documented somewhere. Uh, so now we want to handle this stats call, because <clears throat> for each vnode, the coverage call will ask for, give me the result of this command, but it's a coverage call is a call that's done on all the vnodes, not on one or a set, but on all of them. It's useful to, for example, ask, uh, for example, uh, statistics or um, how much uh, disk space are you using or how busy you are or something like that. <clears throat> so it's handled in a different place. It's not handle command, it's handle coverage, but it's the same, you pattern match the command you get a different uh, set of arguments. Uh, the interesting one is here, a ref ID on a tree item tuple. You have to return it because the, the FSM will send you a, a, a call to handle coverage with a, re a ref ID and will wait for the, for the same ref ID to know who answered because there, there will be many V nodes answering that. So we reply with the tuple with the ref ID and the second place we can return whatever we want. In this case, we we'll return a prop list uh, with uh, op count and, ops, uh, on, and the value, and we return the state uh, as we have it. And we also have a catch-all to, to at least log when we are doing something wrong. Now let's query it. Well, uh, in, now every time I add some new functionality, you have to build the release again. Uh, I won't display it in the following slides. So now we call Flavio stats and we'll return OK and a list of a lot of output. That output is 64, or the number of vnodes, times this, the, the, what the, each vnode replied. So we will do some operations. So the ops count changes for some vnodes. And we get the, in this case, we will get uh, all the results with zero, because we just started the cluster. Uh, all the vnodes are clean. They didn't handle any operation. But after, after we do some operations, we call it again, and some of them will have the ops count to bigger than zero. Uh, we just filter only for the ones that have ops count bigger than zero. And we get that this vnode handled three requests, this vnode handled one, and this one handled two. Um, in this case, I'm running uh, because uh, make rel will create, create a one release, and it will be a one node cluster. But if I had made make <coughs> rel, uh, here the number of the node may be different because different nodes in the cluster will uh, handle the request. Now we need to tolerate faults in our additions because, I don't know, maybe sometimes it fails. Uh, so we will do um, quorum-based, what will be quorum-based read and write. In this case we are re not reading or writing but just calculating. And for this we also use a um, uh, finite state machine to handle the request and response. And this finite state machine is a little bit more complex, so I did a highly advanced <coughs> uh, diagram. Uh, it starts, the FSM starts on init, prepare, execute, it sends the command to all the nodes uh, that must handle it, and it waits until the remaining ones. We have to tell the, this finite state machine, I want to run this command on five nodes, and I want you to reply me when at least three of them replied you. So you can say, okay, if it's a write operation, I say, I, run to, I want to write this to three different vnodes, and whenever one of them replies, I consider it a success, a success, or you can say three and three. That's a configuration thing on your system. Uh, 
uh, when there are no more remaining, it finishes. Uh, but if a timeout, if the timeout happens before all the V nodes replied, um, uh, you will get the timeout. Uh, so we do the same thing. We changed a little bit here the what we are matching on the command. Uh, we match a ref ID as before because since we will be sending the command to more than one node, we want to know which node replied back. Uh, so we do the same here, but we reply with the re uh, ref ID. And the add will change a little bit. We had N and W. Uh, you will find them, I use the names that people tend to use for those. N is how many uh, nodes we want to send the command. Uh, no, W is how many nodes we want to send the command, and N is how many we are waiting for replies. In this case, we are sending the addition to three nodes, and we are waiting three to reply to consider it a success. And we are timing out if it uh, lasts more than five seconds to do that. So we, I did a pretty generic uh, FSM for that, that can I, I use it in this uh, project for all the comments. Um, so we said, send N, W, and the command, and work, wait for the, uh, as a reply, we will get a request ID and we have to wait for it. It's a utility function, it's just receiving, uh, waiting for that rec ID to come back or timeout. Uh, so we add some numbers and you see now we get OK and a list of three items because we are adding the, the element three times. Uh, we get the result for each uh, and the, the partition ID. In this case, if you are doing something more complex than addition, you may want to check, like uh, I think React calls uh, read, repair, write, repair. Like, if you read and you get results back, you can check that the three, one, the three no or the, the nodes that replied, replied with the same content. And if not, then you have to decide what to do about it. And that's, a, that's not a React call because that's something that is, it belongs to your application. So, Let's do it more interesting because adding numbers and ping is not uh, like something really exciting. So we will do some kind of, uh, well, I have a problem. That's, uh, I, I live in, here in Germany, I am Argentinian and I work in software. So that means that I write in Spanish, English and German. And my Argentinian friends don't care about my German uh, writing and a lot of my friends don't care about a lot of stuff that I post. For example, my programming friends don't care about uh, my other things that I post. So the idea is to build a distributed uh, message uh, store with channels. So basically it's like Twitter, but you have different channels. You can say send this message to this channel, to this channel, to this channel, and it will have, you will have multiple streams, not just one. Um, so this guy, Mariana Garra, did a library that does exactly that. It just persists the messages to disk and allows you to read it. So we will just use it. Um, and the interesting thing is that he did it the same at the same days as this presentation was being written. Uh, so what we will do here, we will have a new command called post message with a username, a stream ID, and um, the message you want to post. And we will do the same as before, N3, W3, timeout 5000. Uh, and we, the operation will be post message, username stream message. And here I send in an extra parameter, which is uh, uh, what will be used to hash the, uh, the command. Uh, in this case, all the, all the messages posted to the same username and stream will go to the same V nodes. Uh, we want that because when, when we want to read from a stream, we want to know that all the messages that we send to that stream are in the same vnode. So that means that uh, for a given user, you may have some streams on some vnodes and some streams on other vnodes, and we wait as before. So uh, now the command is a little bit more complex and it uh, has uh, some interesting properties. We match ref ID, post message, username, stream message, uh, and the partition, and we create a path with the partition string, username, stream, and message. Uh, we ensure that the directory exists. We open the stream. Uh, we create a message, and we append it to the stream. And we get the ID, and re return the entry with the ID. Uh, of course, an optimization is not to open and close the stream for each message. We, it's not uh, highly scalable. 
But you can see we use partitions to build the directory tree. We use the partition uh, ID because uh, a given node, a given physical node, will have it theoretically or normally more than one V node. If you have a one node cluster with uh, 64 V nodes, which is the default, you will have 64 V nodes running on your machine. And if you have four real nodes, you will have, uh, I don't know, 64 divided by four. Uh, so when you're writing, you have to ensure that uh, each V node writes to a place prefixed with the partition that it itself has. Otherwise, all the V nodes on the same physical node will be writing to the same place, and that's something you don't want. Oh, you may want, I don't know, uh, but uh, it's easier if you just prefix uh, all the directories with the partition ID. So we will post a message, uh, my user in English, uh, and I get the reply with the, it's a record. Uh, it has other fields, but by default you can just provide the message. Uh, it has a timestamp and ID and you can provide a geolocation. Um, and we post again uh, in Spanish. And to ensure that it's actually written, of course we build it again and we run the console and we run the command. We do cd to rel flavio, which is the base folder of the release. And we look for uh, files that contain messages, the name messages. And we can see that it's three times for English and three times for Spanish. That means that the, this uh, the fact that we asked three vnodes to write the messages is working because we have three folders with the message we wrote and three folders with the English ones. Uh, how am I on the three minutes left? Whoa. Well, I'm not that far away. Uh, uh, we want to read what we wrote, so we basically implement a common call get messages, which is does the same, but instead of writing, we read. Uh, and we tried, and it works. <laughs> Uh, and now we use coverage for something more useful. Instead of asking the, how many operations you handled, you can, we can ask uh, which are the streams for this user, uh, existing streams, or uh, which are the, the users on the system, uh, which is the same, basically. It's, uh, oh, I won't cover handoff. You're lucky about that, but you can ask me later. Handoff is the hardest part. Uh, the, Processes like this is the process you have to do to transfer information from one node to the other when a V node is transferring. So you have to implement the handoff callback, uh, and you have to implement how to encode and decode the items as they are transferred. Uh, this is I have written a lot on the readme about this, so you can read it there. And to try to build a node, you start one cluster, write it to it, and then join the other clusters and confirm that the data moved. And all has logs, so you can see the process uh, going out. And you can confirm that the data mode by listing the directories in the nodes. And I'm out of time, but you can provide a nice HTTP API for, for your messaging thing. Uh, and, of course, you can read that. <laughs> Well, next steps is to cache the stream handles, to do pub sub uh, over cobble with bullet, and to use real core security for authentication and permissions on a web UI. This is an ongoing project. Uh, the project is there. Each step, each slide of each step of slides is a commit on the project, and it has the biggest readme ever. It's 32 pages uh, of readme explaining everything I did for each commit and a link to the commit. And this is the real store I'm developing for a storing stream of events. And you can ask me outside, uh, I don't know, whatever you want. Thank you. <laughs>